I'm a feminist, but this last week has been International Women's Day week. Mm. You're not, not a fan of international women here? No, <laughs> They and only like women in one nation. <laughs> I sometimes am called upon to be sort of some kind of a feminist Father Christmas figure. Mm. Like, for example, right now I am both here and in Bournemouth. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to get around. And on the actual day itself, I had so many keynotes and radio thing and a TV thing and da-da-da. I melted down and... I'll be honest with you, mm. the only way you could describe it is hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> An attack of the vapours. Yeah. I seemed like the kind of Victorian woman that would be visited by a doctor with uh, mm -hmm. a wind-up vibrator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On International Women's Day, on IWD yeah. itself. i got to be honest. And that probably would have helped a little emergency treatment. Where is that guy now? That's what I ask. <laughs> Where is that guy when you need him to make house calls? That's a good question. I guess Amazon will send you one overnight, but it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Thus, the dilemma of single straights everywhere. <laughs> it's not the same when it's not attached to a live body. I'm fine. I wouldn't describe you as a single straight. No. Not me. <laughs> But I would, say, I would describe you the as... The girls a that are looking for the boys that will make them go, yay. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. Are you, do you identify as single? Yes. <laughs> you, so you're, yeah. are you would be a single pan? I'm a single pan. Uh, it's, you know, the pan part is fun. The single part, I was so bored. It's just like, somebody else make me come already. It's an exhausting life. Do you have an I'm a feminist bump for us? Yeah. I'm a feminist, but someone else make me come already. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but <laughs> I'm a feminist, but on International Women's Day, when I had an attack of the hysterias, right before I had to do a TV recording, I cried my fake eyelashes off. <laughs> oh no! I was just overtired, you guys. It was. It was. I had to like. I hadn't had much sleep. I'd had like three hours sleep because I had to do a late night prep thing before. And it was just like, bang, 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 bang. Do this, do this, lunch, da, 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 da. Go to here, go to there, da. Mm. And I just, you know when sometimes you just melt she down. She was a woman who had it all and she couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they don't give us anything. <laughs> you forgot to say I'm a feminist butt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I, I cried my fake eyelashes off. Oh. That's a true story. And I was so disappointed because oh. they were lovely. And I'd kept them on from the day before because I'd had my makeup done and someone mm. had stuck the singles on. You know, the Ooh. singles? And they're so much better you than the You cut off the singles? Yeah. My God. Yeah. You were going through it, my sis. I, I asked her to put on some straight singles. Yeah. <laughs> the straight singles are going through it. Yeah, and I That was the wettest straight singles I've ever been. <laughs> um... Do you have any other rhyme of feminist buffs? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why, why not? Um, <laughs> I'm a feminist, and I, I know that like we're supposed to love the skin that we're in, but my friend sent me this face peel that's really hard to get online. And, you know, I love the skin that I'm in, but also if it all just fell off and there was new skin... <laughs> I think I would prefer that. And it's <laughs> oh, my God. It, this should not be done by mail order. This should be something you go into a proper salon and you pay money they for. They want so much money, Deborah. I, I'll just, I'll ju I will just put the burning chemicals on no. my own. <laughs> you cannot do this at home. You cannot. It but seems simple. It says it takes 15 minutes. No. <laughs> Don't leave acid on your face for 15 minutes. Okay. You, I, you'll peel for like a week no, you should not. It'll just fall off your face. Okay, I've had this done. I'm a feminist, but I've had this done professionally. 
I've leaned back and they put, it's, they say it's fruit acid. Who knows what it really is? It could be car battery acid as far as I know. Jeez. I just trust the lady. But she, it, she dabs it like this. And it fe- sounds like Oh, I wasn't something... going to dab it. I was going to do like a, a rub No. <laughs> she dabs it, but it sounds like something sizzling in a frying pan. Okay. But she just goes... And then she goes flap, flap, flap with her hands and leaves it on for like literally 20, 30 seconds and immediately takes it off. And then, I mean, the first time this happened to me, it was incredible because she showed me my face in a mirror and I was like, oh my God, I look nine. Do other people know about this? It's a miracle. Honestly, it's a miracle. You look like 12 at the most. I was being carded for booze. Like, it was incredible. (laughs) And so I recommend it, but it's got to be very gently, very quickly, very carefully done. What you must not do (sighs) is get... Would you give yourself like a smear? Well, I know that if you're not insured in America, you might have to, but I would recommend heavily that with the NHS that you don't. I've definitely done some uh, gynecological procedures. What? (laughs) Not for medical reasons. (laughs) Are we back to the straight singles? A thousand percent. The pan singles? The pan singles, The pan single activity. know. Maybe I'll let someone with a fucking license do it. Or maybe I'll just um, just let it fall off like the skin of a jacket potato. No. (laughs) You have beautiful skin and you're very young. And Uh, you only only have one face. And don't... Your face is your fortune. You're in show business. I'm a feminist, but oh my God, I didn't just say that. (laughs) Oh, my God, I'm so sorry I said that. I take it back, I take it back, I take it back. Uh-huh. Your brain and soul and heart yeah. and activism and comedy and your talent yeah. is your fortune. All of those are your fortune. Yeah, your face Deborah. is irrelevant entirely. Don't objectify me, which is exactly why I can burn it off. No. <laughs> I don't believe you're burning it off, so I objectify you less. That's what I think. I think if you didn't want me to objectify you, you'd leave the regular skin on. This is it's a tough... It, I feel like I'm stuck between... You know, a rock and an epidermis. <laughs> if Do you, you have it? I'm a feminist, but Deborah. I've done three, maybe four accidentally. I've been just saying, I've been clumsily just saying shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live from Vicar Street in Dublin. Special guests, Flora Finn and Lord Mayor of Dublin, Alison Gilliland, with music from Tolly Mackey. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. wanting to touch you but still being hesitant because it's not over is it we're just acting as if it's over most of the time so I've just what I was doing if you're listening at home and this part makes it into the show I was running up to the front row the way I've seen boy bands do um it's very effective for them they could be built a fantastic fan base doing it so I'm really hoping continues to work for me And I'm just wiggling my fingers in the way that you would normally... A boy band would touch someone in the front row. Oh, hello, you look like you might be in a boy band. (laughs) If you don't mind me saying. You look very boy band-esque. You would sort of be the intellectual one in a boy band, wouldn't you? The one that that went to uni and got a tutu. (laughs) You did get a tutu! (laughs) Come on, we're off to a roaring start! A roaring start. What's your name, sir, if you don't mind me asking? Connor. Good Irish name. Absolutely. Lots of Connors. Connors are always playwrights, I find. Do you playwright? No. It would go with the two, too, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> too busy writing plays. What do you do, Connor? I work for a homeless charity. You work for a homeless charity. <laughs> well done, Connor. That's not funny at all, Connor. <laughs> Quite disappointing for me. I was hoping it was something more like, oh, I do a little, little light freelancing for a men's rights activist charity. <laughs> but I don't enjoy it. Because uh, that would have given me more to work with. 
Or, or just even something like, I'm a consultant. Um, I had someone the other day, a man in the front row work for Amazon. I had a lovely time with that. <laughs> Former Jehovah's Witness elder I had in my audience the other day in Brighton. People are, are you cheering the, the religion? Because I'm not. I, I'm, I'm cheering the Jehovah's Witnesses in the way many of you are cheering Catholicism. Uh, <laughs> To which, as which to say, not at all. And if you are Catholic and in and enjoy that religion, as is not me, by the way, diminishing it, I'm just saying some of your number may have had worse or better experiences with it. I've realised I've said something that maybe I shouldn't have said. So I'm over from, from London, um, and I thought I'd just do a little light, throw a little light shade at Catholicism as an opener. Because it usually goes down terribly well, terribly well, terribly well, terribly well. I might remind you that I'm Australian. Thank you. <laughs> Always enjoy reminding you of that. Um, uh, so, Connor, just to be clear, you work for a homelessness charity. Do you listen to The Guilty Feminist? You do? It's one of the good ones. I'm going to ask a question that I know many of you here would like me to ask. Are you single, Connor? Oh no, his girlfriend is now clutching him like a handbag at a crowded marketplace. She just immediately went, no, Connor did not answer, interestingly. But uh, an adjacent woman, he went, uh, and she went, no. Is he very much off the market? Is that a permanent situation? Oh, she's showing us a ring. Is that an engagement ring or a wedding ring? You've really locked that situation down. You found a feminist who listens to the guilty feminist who works for a homelessness charity. And you said, absolutely, this is the one. I shop no further. De delete hinge. And just, yeah, stick with this. You aren't going to do any better. And that's not because you, you are a gorgeous, glamorous, fantastic woman. You aren't going to do any better because of the state of men. <laughs> not a reflection on you, my friend. Not a reflection on you, my friend, at all. You, you should be able to do better, but you can't because of them. You are a queen. You should be able to. But, and I'm not saying, Connor, you're not a king. I'm just saying I see a lot of queens in the world walking around with men in middle management going, this is, listen, I'm very grateful. I'm grateful, grateful for this. Um, so welcome. Oh, sorry, what's your name? I don't want to call you Connor's girlfriend because this is a feminist show. Anna. Is that an Irish name? No, I'm Brazilian. Oh, you're Brazilian. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> Because it's all right if I can't pronounce a Brazilian name. I feel in Ireland, if I can't pronounce an Irish name, it starts to get tense. <laughs> and speaking... Oh, sorry. I'll let you go because it's You'll let it go because it's me? Thank you, Anna. Thank you. I appreciate that very, very, very much. What I'm going to ask on behalf of the Irish women of Ireland now, have you come from Brazil to find the only good man in Ireland? <laughs> Because that's not going to go down well very, very well, Anna. I'm not saying it's the only good man. I'm not saying he's the only good man. Of course I'm not. But it worked better for the joke, Connor. And I think, like, same as in, in, in the UK, you've got to be in the top, you know, 5% of men. Listen to the guilty feminist, identify as a feminist, uh, work for a homelessness charity. Is he a good husband as well? He's developing and learning. Mm. Developing and learning. Still in the top 5%, but developing and learning. Connor, I feel Connor, we need to give you right of reply. I, you should have stayed in the bathroom. Yeah. 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 That's what he said, just to be clear. I did not, I didn't say that to him. He said it. I was repeating it so you could hear at the back. Now, I have a very important question. It's a question that a lot of people in this audience are waiting for. In fact, I saw a picture on Twitter, and I can now see the T-shirts that were put on Twitter. If anyone saw it? I'm pretty sure people are cheering, because whether they saw it on Twitter or whether they saw it in the queue to come in here tonight, there is a, a girl band in the middle of the room, and they are wearing T-shirts that say... Team Gay Michael! Team Gay Michael! <laughs> and what do they say on the back? <laughs> Vicar Street 2022. Okay. All right. Nowhere on there is the guilty feminist, and that disappoints me. But, <laughs> but I'm wearing a cape that says it. <laughs> Made by one of your own, Despicable Daisy. Does anyone know Despicable Daisy? Yeah, she's an Irish cloak and hood maker. 
Um, that's her main... That, which I, No, she's not. She's a dentist, but this is what she does. <laughs> it's, this is what she does for love. Um, she makes uh, sparkly capes, and, uh, and it's, they're just absolutely brilliant. I love her. Um, and she's done a range of sisterhoods for us. They say on them, the sisterhood protects us from the rain. And uh, it's, they're really, really beautiful. And all the money goes to Choose Love. So if you would like her to make you a sisterhood, um, then we can put you in touch with Despicable Daisy. Or She would have been here tonight, but apparently she's off on a caravan, which, I mean, she says she's a feminist, but when we're in town, where is she? To Spickle Daisy, if you're listening to this, and I know that you are, thank you so much for my cape. She left it here. She dropped it off at Vicar Street and left it. This is a new one. Anyway, so some of you will know about Team Gay Michael. If, if, you, if you know who the Gay Michaels are, could you give us a cheer? If you don't know who the Gay Michaels are, give us a cheer. See, those cheers are sadder. Um, <laughs> The first time Alison Spittle and I played Vicar Street, uh, there was a man in the audience, and I said, are you single? And, um, you know, because I thought, well, I could find him a nice date. And I had, what I'd done is projected heteronormativity all over this lovely venue. And he said, I'm gay. And I said, oh, well, I'll find you. That's great. I'll find you. I'm sure there's another gay man in here somewhere. And uh, I found a second gay man. And do you know what his name was? Michael. <laughs> and then a third gay Michael stood up. <laughs> Like a holy trinity of gay Michaels. <laughs> now, I already know that one gay Michael is in Canada. And funnily enough, it's a video call! <laughs> oh my God! Is anybody filming this? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Did, any, did anybody film the moment? Where Gay Michael came on via camera. If not, we're going to have to recreate it. <laughs> Did anyone film it? Do it again, do it again. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have to fake my surprise, and you're going to have to fake your surprise. Hold on. Can I... I'm a feminist, but if... And I've probably said this podcast, but it's true. If, I, if the feminist genie came and gave me three wishes, one of them would be for tights that say up. Because <laughs> obviously equality for everyone would be in there, but... Snag tights, no, I need to start getting with snag tights. Snag tights, if you're listening, I will happily accept a pair of tights. Um, and then talk about, no, I'll buy them. I'll buy them with my money because they're not very expensive, I don't think. And I'm just, I don't want, I don't need free stuff. Don't send me that. Don't send me that. I'll buy them. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Feminism. Okay. All right. This is so casual now because it's like, I oh, will just turn it out and then the paparazzi are in just for this moment. Okay. Um, so, there are three gay Michaels. Now, I know one gay Michael, one gay Michael cannot be with us because I know, it said on Twitter, he was in, he is in Canada. And he jumped in your car. Oh! What? Gay Michael is on video. Everybody! Oh! My God! Gay Michael! Vicar Street loves you, gay Michael! Okay. I talked about you on the six o'clock show. <laughs> what did you say? I said, I love you, Deborah. Oh! <laughs> if you didn't hear that listening at home, he said, I love you, Deborah. <laughs> are there any other gay Michaels in either OG <laughs> gay Michaels or gay Michaels who heard about this phenomenon and thought I could join that coterie? OG! OG! <laughs> OG gay Michael! OG, 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 OG. So we have two gay Michaels, two of the three gay Michaels. Is it possible that there is a third gay Michael in this room? Do we have a third Michael of any sort? Third Michael, do we have a third Michael? We have a Mick, we have a Mick on, Mick on Sound and Lights. Will that do? Mick, is your real name Michael? Yes. <gasps> Mick! Okay, shh, everyone, we need to ask Mick a very important question. <laughs> you have no need to declare this, Mick. If this is, you can just say pass. It's none of your business. I work here. It's illegal to ask you to declare this. <laughs> but is there any chance that you have now or at any point in the future might be curious... Is this, is it, don't edit this out of the podcast if this doesn't go well, please. I don't want to get cancelled. But uh, uh, are, you, are you fully heterosexual? Fully heterosexual. Oh, 
So close. So close. And listen, it's not a disappointment, Michael. You can't help it. We, we love you anyway. We love you anyway. Is there another gay man in the house who isn't called Michael? Yes! Two? Are you together? Are you putting up hands? You're both together? Could I have your full names? I'm going to need first, middle, and last. I'm full. Marty. You sorry? Marty. What's your name? Gay Marty. Gay Marty. <laughs> we have a gay Marty. So we have two gay Michaels, a straight Mick, and a gay Arty. What else have we got? <laughs> gay, gay Felix. Sorry, don't, don't, I don't want you to out Felix if he's not. Just, he's just. Oh, he's no, he's been outed before. I can see that. He's, he's waving like the queen. What's that? Five Felix. Oh, bye Felix. Is he leaving? I'm kidding. Oh, bye Felix. So it's gay Artie and bye Felix and straight Mick. Uh, can anyone improve on that? If not, I think we have our full complement of characters. <laughs> well done, Team Gay Michael. I believe you summoned two Gay Michaels, one very much here in spirit and virtually, and one in the flesh. Um, gay, can I just ask, Gay Artie, are you in a couple? Gay Marty. Gay Marty. Oh, not Artie, sorry. Are you, are you in a couple? Oh, he's checking in. <laughs> He's checking in with Bye Felix. Okay. We can pry no more. I was trying to get Gay Michael a date in case he was single, but I will pry no more because Bye Felix has now just disappeared into his shirt. I don't want to. Bye Felix. Oh, there's Gay Felix and Bye Felix. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. I thought you were correcting me and going, I know for a fact the man's bi. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know, but I know, but I know, but I know. I was like, okay, okay. Maybe I misheard. Maybe there's evidence going up on there in the gallery that I know nothing about. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I see there's a gay Felix and there's a bi Felix. <sighs> so... Now we have three gay Michaels and two queer Felixes. <laughs> and a Marty in a pear tree. <laughs> now, listen, gay Michael on the, on the phone, would you like to just be propped up against a beer glass and watch the show? <laughs> I, we'd love that if you want to stay. Love that, we'd love that. Great, super. Um, now, I need to bring on my incredible co-pilot for this evening. Uh, please, put your hands together and make incredible woohooing noises for the wonderful Kima Bob! That's right. The part... The part of Alison Spittle tonight will be played by Kima Bob. And can I tell you... I've been practicing. I will not do an accent. I've been told it's offensive. <laughs> There's very few ways a black queer woman can get cancelled, but that is one of them. Yeah. yeah. Doing... And I've been working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Doing... Yeah. Uh, Hi, I'm Alison. I'm a very caring person and a great friend. Yes, good work. That's pretty good. That's so if you have the accent, it's suddenly... Up. The part of Alison Spittle is being played by Kima Bob also at our hotel mm -hmm. because this is what happened. We got there. Tom was like, we're tight on time. I've got to get to the theatre to tech. And so when the person behind the counter said, uh, which one's Alison? Tom said, just pointed at Kima and made her fake it like the talented yeah. Mr. Ripley. Yeah. Didn't prep her. Did yeah. not prep her. Just went, this is Alison. And Kima, what did you do? Because uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was best not to speak because I was like, they know, they'll know. Alice I don't Spittles, have the vibe of an Allison. Alice, Alice Spittle's famous here. She's had like a sitcom. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I saw the woman behind the counter go, 
I saw her go, mm, something's not right here. I just, I just stood still. She was like, she was like, so is Allison here yet? Yeah. And then Tom was like, there she is. And I was like, yeah. So if all of Alison Spittle's credit cards are suddenly cancelled, it's because the fraud squad have been called. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, she's, you, you held it well. You managed it well. I try. I, I do what I can for the community. Could we have... Could you give Kima one thing to say to see if you could teach her to say some, one thing with an Irish accent? Because she's from Texas. Is there anything simple that a person from Texas can say? How are you? Oh, okay. How are you? What, say that again? How are you? Okay. Uh, oh, no, I understood How are you? It in, uh, How are you? But, but, okay. What's... No, no, I might not have. I might oh, yeah. not have. What's your name? Anya. Anya. Okay. In... <laughs> if Hell you know... yeah, Anya. I'm you... Alison. It's good work so far. I'm trying to get you some tutelage here. Okay. Do you know what Anya means in my language? Because I'm from Australia. Do you know what it means? It means something. Do you not know? Do you not know? Do you know? I, have you been to Australia or from Australia? You just know. Okay. If you're in Australia... You like to shorten everything. Because I don't know, it's just like, um, there's a sort of same thing as you don't open your mouth very much. It's like the flies might get in. And it's very hot, so don't expend energy on words you don't have to say. So if someone's called Jonathan, it's Jono, you know, and someone's called... Wow, this is wild right now. Like, there are... <laughs> for like the past 30 seconds, I was like, what the fuck is she saying? <laughs> These people no, 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 understand no. it because a lot of uh, no, no, Australians no, 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 originally no, 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 no. came. A lot of, lot of, a lot of white Australians certainly originally came from Ireland. So there's a lot of Irish in the accent. Oh, it's like true. a combination yeah. of Irish and Cockney. Um, but there's no need to say. I mean, Australians love to sort of encourage each other as well. Yeah, as we long as no one gets too big for their boots. Other down under. That's right. And. Uh, so, no, as long as no one gets up above, the, uh, you know, no tall poppies, no go and getting bigger than their boots. But if yeah, they're on the no level, we we'll encourage each boots. other. And so we might say, good on ya. Mm. Good on ya. But then, yeah. no need to say the good, it takes all day. It's too hot. So what do we say? On ya, son. On ya. Wow. I.e., your name. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What does it mean in Irish? Ooh. That is a lot more poetical. <laughs> it's more something they say at stag nights in uh, Australia. A thousand percent. This, this needs, I need to give her the mic now. This is quite important. I sent her her voice. I was just going to say, hence why our language is superior to English. That's correct. That's correct. I stand a, a proud Irish queen. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's also, a popular I feel like opinion this is I like, hear it. I feel like it's like a problematic statement, but Irish people are my favourite white people. <laughs> I don't know. It's not problematic in this room, my friends. It's a great vibe. Yeah, yeah. Tell the English I said it, I don't care. Uh, they know what's up. Can you, can you tell Kima, can you tell Kima what uh, they say in the commitments? Does anyone know? The commitment. <laughs> Do, what? I think I think it I think it's probably something we wouldn't say now and will be taken out of the podcast. But you can tell her. No, they're saying they won't say it. Oh my god! Wow. I'll tell you what later. Is the, what is the commitment? Okay. T- we, oh oh now yeah! Tell me. You lost them, Kima. You tell had them me. in the palm of your hand tell and you've me lost what's them the all. Commitment. Um, okay, Anya, could you give us sort of some short summary of what the commitments is? Because I don't, I'm not saying in front of here. I, I, mean, I know, but I don't want us to give the elevator pitch. It's not my place. So Roddy Doyle wrote a collection of three books. Great. And it was kind of stories of Irish people. And the commitments was one of the stories from those three books, one of okay. the three. And it's basically a group of working class guys from Dublin who start a band. Great. Yeah, soul band, which is the quite unusual. Band. A soul band. Okay. Yeah, it's just quite <laughs> unusual. What was it set in the eighties? The eighties or nineties? Early nineties. Early nineties, great. Yeah, in Dublin. Yeah. So they're playing um, soul music, great. but they live in. So they Dublin. they feel a certain connection, a certain kind yeah, of like, like I've been through camaraderie. A lot to have black people vibes. Yeah. Right. 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 Um. 
I, I'm still not going to say the joke because you, you right. like right. Uh, you have to watch the movie. <laughs> oh, I, I was people of the black people of Europe. And the, and the dubs, the dubs are. That's mad because what's mad about it is that there are black people in Europe. Yes. <laughs> so technically, that's, they would be the black people yes. of Europe. That's that's why Anya <laughs> didn't want to say it. That's why. That's mad. It's when you said Irish people are my favorite white people. It's true. Some Irish people came out are black. Yeah, apparently so. Well, this is a beautiful moment. Well, the thing is, I guess what I mean is the Irish, which is short for white Irish. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, we are, we're off. We're yeah, off to the races. That's right. Send, the, send the everything that just happened to the council committee. Me and Anya, our lives are over. <laughs> Are you ready for some stand-up comedy? Yeah. Then please welcome to the stage the one, the only, the incredible yeah. Kima Bob. Yeah. Oh man, what a what a time to be alive! Yeah, yeah. so great. Oh man, Dublin, the city is so nice. It's called Dublin. <laughs> Oh, so well. I remember the first time I came here and I uh, crossed that uh, river and I was like, one of these sides is not like the other. <laughs> Y'all got to deal with that. Um, it's wild, but I'm not going to talk smack about Dublin. I think it's a great place. And I'm from Texas, which is the giant piece of shit uh, at the bottom of America with none of the masks and all of the guns. <laughs> Don't know if you've heard of it. I would say that we have a, like, shoot first, ask questions later culture, but we don't ask questions. <laughs> there are no questions present. It's wild. And I was recently um, traveling, like, I was in Ghana for all of January. It was Incredible! I haven't been in front of this many white people in a long time. Um, <laughs> it was so good. Um, and before I was in Ghana, I was in Texas visiting my family because I haven't seen them since before the panorama. Um, and uh, family is a wild one. Like, you know family, right? They're the people and, like, maybe you wouldn't talk to them if you weren't born into them. But, like... <laughs> Here you are, and here they are, always fucking there. Um, it's a wild one. Like, sometimes I feel like all me and my family have in common are thick ankles. Please. Like, I'm a feminist, but stop looking at my ankles. Um, <laughs> it's wild. And I think sometimes I still kind of, like, mourn the childhood that I wish I had. You know, like, sometimes I just wish I had a childhood from, like, a fun, wholesome movie. Like, is that too much to ask? Like, you wake up every day and there's a puppy and it's Christmas. Like, is that too much? Or it's a different puppy every day, reckless. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I just think it would be really great if I were to, like, use my superpowers to fight crime with my mom, dad, and two little brothers. You know, like, is that too much? And we would wear, like, custom costumes made by our tiny costumier, Edna Mode. <laughs> and people would say, that family's fantastic. No, they're incredible. And <laughs> I'd say, we're not incredible. We just love each other. Like, is that too much? I guess. I don't know. I guess maybe I wish that, like... I don't know, like, my, my dad, like, when he wasn't doing, like, voiceover jobs, would, like, dress up like an old lady and, um, <laughs> like, sneak into, like, get a babysitting job, like, from my mom to try to, like, win her back. You know what I mean? Like, does that too much? I don't know. That's kind of dark. That guy did not know boundaries. <laughs> so, but, but, like, like, she kicked you out of the house. Stay gone. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's not... I don't know. I guess I just wish that, like, 
Like, I don't mind a little tragedy. I guess I wish, like, that I was just, like, young and, like, I'm young and, like, my dad dies tragically and I grow up far away from the pride rock that my <laughs> family <laughs> live at and I grow strong with the help of my two friends and then we battle my uncle who is oddly handsome for a lion. Uh, <laughs> like, is that... Is that... No, that's a bit sad, actually. That's kind of fucked up. I don't know. I guess... I guess movie childhoods aren't actually that good. <laughs> like, everyone loves fucking Home Alone, but that had to have been traumatic for Kevin. <laughs> His family left him, went on vacation, didn't notice. He had to fight crime. <laughs> what? I don't know. I guess the movie childhoods aren't real. And, like, movie parents aren't real or whatever. Like, movie roosters aren't even real. Let me take y'all on a journey, okay? So I did grow up in Texas, but I didn't grow up by, like, farms and stuff, okay? I grew up in, like, cities and shit. So I thought that roosters in the real world are like roosters in movies. And what they show you about roosters in movies when they're not trying to escape and stuff like that <laughs> um, is they'll show you that roosters are like nature's alarm clock, right? <laughs> Like, roosters cock-a-doodle-doo, and they do it one time a day. They do it in the morning. And I thought that was the purpose that they serve on this earth, because everything has a purpose. Like, uh, uh, spiders eat uh, insects, and birds shit seeds. Birds shit seeds. <laughs> but now roosters, they wake you up. Um, and in the movies, they always show, like, one solitary rooster who looks noble and kind of fucking buff for a chicken. And... <laughs> I'm just like, okay, sir. <laughs> um, and he's always, like, standing on a fence, and he's like, that. And the, the sun is, like, rising behind him, and he's like, ooh, not yet. And then he gets there, and he goes, yes, it's fucking go time. <laughs> and I thought that's what they do. And recently, I was on a farm, and it turns out those motherfuckers don't know what time it is. <laughs> And they do that all day long. All day long. I thought they were nature's alarm clock. Turns out they're obnoxious. It's madness. So I guess, like, if chickens in real life can't live up to the movies, then how do I expect my weird parents to live up to the movies? Because they're just doing their best with the little instruction manual of parenting that was, like, passed down to them. They all are. They're all just fucking trying. And a lot of them didn't have, like, the best instruction manual. Like, in the one that's been passed down in my family's generations, there are several pages missing, okay? And somebody spilled coffee in the middle. You could tell. <laughs> you could tell. People have just been improvising and making shit up. <laughs> And somebody used several of the pages as a base to snort cocaine. <laughs> Not saying any names, Grandpa. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> it's absolute madness. So I just, like, I don't know. I used to be upset with my parents for, like, how much I feel like they fucked me up. And then I kind of met my grandparents. And I don't mean met them. I mean, like, met their true selves. You know what I mean? Because I feel like when people get older... They don't really have the energy to pretend to be nice anymore. <laughs> you know, like, my grandma doesn't bake after church. She just, like, cusses at people in traffic. <laughs> right? There's no, like, covering muffins with butter. It's just calling strangers motherfucker. Like, <laughs> like that's who she is now. And I'm just like, okay, you were all forgiven. <sighs> It's absolute madness. So I've had to learn how to, like, be my own parent, which I guess is the task for, like, most of us. Like, that's what being an adult is. You learn to, like, be your own parent. You're like, don't eat candy or fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> you scold yourself. Um, <laughs> and you nurture yourself and shit like that. And, and you uh, heal. You try to heal your issues. And I feel like there are a lot of, like, daddy issues and mommy issues out in the world um, and instead of, like, dealing with them head on and acknowledging them, we just, like, overachieve. And, like, a lot of people watch stepmom porn. And <laughs> so much stepmom porn. And I feel like we got to do better. Like, we mostly got to do better on behalf of stepmoms. We need better stepmom representation. 
There is no way there are that many women in their late 30s who are desperate to fuck dudes that can't afford to move out. <laughs> That's not fair to stepmoms. It's mad. I don't know. Oh, God. And I, I think my family really could use, like, a positive role model, especially when it comes to, like, what you can and cannot say. Ooh! I have heard those people say so many things that would easily get a white family canceled. <laughs> I was like, it's, this is fucked up. And I think, like, the, the like, proud queer person and energetic feminist in me is always just so stunned that, like, this is who I am, and this is who they are, and they fucking suck. <laughs> like, I'm always just like, whoa. Um, and, and my uncles, y'all, my uncles, to be as unattractive and chronically single as they are, <laughs> they have so many opinions. <laughs> And I'm just like, sirs, shut up and read the room. <laughs> and by the room, I mean your life. <laughs> it's madness. Like, I was home uh, recently for uh, Thanksgiving, which is what the old name is bad. I think people, I think a lot of people got so distracted by the fact that Christopher Columbus had three boats that they ignored the genocide. <laughs> Not great. Not a good holiday. So, so, and what a dumb man. He was like, this is obviously the West Indies. And it's like, no, you dumb bitch. You're way above it. Um, silly little goose. Learn how to use your Google Maps, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I was with my family having a dinner on the third Thursday in November, America style. And uh, my cousin got a plate full of salad, and it was, like, a great salad. It had, like, dried walnuts and cranberries and avocados, all sorts of shit. My aunt really tried, okay? And my cousin got a plate full of it, and my dumb uncle wasn't having it. And he stood up from the table and goes, Look at this boy, plate full of salad. Look at him. He got the plate of a California female. <laughs> <laughs> now, we can all agree that obviously makes sense. <laughs> it was madness. He said it was so much heart. He was like, ooh, I got him. This is a zinger. Not only are you from California, a great state to live in, <laughs> but also you're a female. The worst thing that can happen to a person. Uh, it was madness. It, he said it like he was like, Oh, oh, vitamins and nutrients, that's for women. <laughs> this guy loves vegetables, pussy. Like, it, was, it was crazy. And it got me thinking about what the plate of like a Texas female would be like. Um, and all I could come up with was just steak. Um, there's no plate, it's just steak. And on the steak, there's a tiny Texas flag. And when you read the flag, it says, hey, girl. Hope you have a nice day. Um, this cow, by the way, used to have more reproductive rights than you. But uh, now it's dead. So you guys are on equal footing. Enjoy your steak, girl. Um, that's dark. That's sad. Uh, gang... This has been such a lovely moment. Thank you for having me and having us. I've been Kayla Bob. You've been great. Kayla Bob, everybody! Kayla Bob, everybody! Thank you. Are you ready for some more stand up? Woman that you've never heard of in your life, <laughs> the incredible Deborah Francis Ward! So it's a pleasure to be here in Europe. I used to live in Europe. Now I don't, and yet I didn't move. Riddle me this, Ireland. Riddle me this. And, I mean, it's a breakup. The UK has had a breakup with Europe. And the UK, you know, part of us, like in any breakup, in any breakup, part of us didn't want to break up at all. Part of us said, why would I ever leave you? And the other part of us said, 
I need to move on. I don't want to be here anymore. I can do better. I'd be better off on my own. Now, I was in the half of us that felt we're never going to do better than this. I felt like Anna felt about Connor. I think the whole of us now feels like we've made a horrible mistake. But half of us is too proud to say, can we come back? Because we're not, we're feeling vulnerable. Also, that half of us that previously wanted to leave, that half of us now sees that you have moved on without us <laughs> and are kind of happy about it. And that's not what that half of us wanted. That half of us wanted you crying, going, when are you going to come back? But I am aware, Ireland, that you have always enjoyed love, being proud of being Europeans. And the only thing that you didn't enjoy about being European <laughs> was being twinned with the United Kingdom. <laughs> handcuffed, handcuffed to your former oppressors. That's stuck in the craw. Now you are European but no longer have any ties with the filthy Brits. So much so that while I do not wish to be a conspiracy theorist, I do rather wonder if some of you snuck over, bunged on a posh accent and loitered around a bus stop saying, I, I, think, we, I, I think we should get out of the European Union. I don't know. I'm not at all sure it's right for us. Some of you, I believe, dressed up as Daily Mail journalists, <laughs> came amongst us and had us throw ourselves out of the European Union. <laughs> Ireland, you can confess now and unmask yourselves like an old man at the end of a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> did you or did you not? Kick us out of the European Union and buy stealth. <laughs> you do understand that this will be broadcast in Britain. <laughs> A chunky minority of women in the middle sounded like those women in the middle of the stoning scene. <laughs> In the life of Brian. <laughs> there are women here at the Stony. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, we heard it here, Britain. We heard it here. We heard it here. Listen, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for anything. How could I? I ch I've chosen to live in the United Kingdom. That night, that title, the United Kingdom, is sounding uh, more and more ridiculous every day. <laughs> we could not be less united. I mean, we're going to lose Scotland. And it's the best part. Sorry, Northern Ireland. Uh... Oh, okay. Northern Ireland's better than Scotland. It's a home crowd, but still, I think... All right, just by a cheer... If I gave you two tickets <laughs> to one of those locations, you could either go to Belfast or Edinburgh. And a week in a luxury hotel during either the Edinburgh Festival or whatever happens in Belfast. <laughs> and now are you cheering? Now are you cheering for all that? I don't think you are. And I'm pretty sure some of you are from there. <laughs> and you're like, oh, the festival's lovely, and I might pop over to Glasgow for a couple of days. Uh, I, uh, it's International Women's Day week. <laughs> I mean, we're just at the side of the week. It goes on, it goes on. That's a season, International Women's Day. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know what's happened. I used to be a comedian, and now I'm a professional woman. I don't mean, I don't mean I'm a professional woman. I mean, I'm woman for a living. I didn't mean this to happen, but they call me up. 
They call me up all the time. This is the kind of thing I ring me up about. Hi, yes, um, I'm from BBC Radio something. Um, we'd like you to comment on the fact that uh, Baby It's Cold Outside has been banned. <laughs> this actually happened to me, and I said, oh. And they said, and we'd like your thoughts on that as a feminist, because we think, you know, we're pretty sure you'll, you'll approve of that. I said, no, I don't approve of that at all. I was like, I am not comfortable with banning things, but also I'm very uncomfortable with the things that my generation are saying that the young people want to ban. I don't know what to do. I'm just frozen in the middle going, why don't you stop saying things they want to ban without them banning it? And maybe you could stop banning things and then we could all be happy. But then J.K. Rowling does another tweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Honestly, someone has got to get her off the computer. I mean, why doesn't she just write another book about a nice wizard or something? What gets me about it is, like, she went by a, like, gender-neutral pseudonym to sell her books and then wrote some other books over, like... In a man's like, name. Yeah, so sh sh shut the fuck up, Just Karen Rowling. Jo Joanna. Joanna. No, her name is Just Karen because she's... <laughs> Just being a Karen. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, I'm going to say this. Team Michael, you've got the one mic between you. Like You're like a pub quiz team. And uh, if we need your help in this last segment, we will call on it. You've got those four minds. So um, I, my job tonight... I promised Alison Spittle yeah. that she's been passing the wisdom on to me at Vicar Street Educate all these years. Me. And I'm now going to try and pass on what I believe I have learnt. Great. If I'm going wrong, audience, you have to make s noises. Because I'm going to try and teach Kima about feminism in Ireland. I'm eager to learn. Um, team Gay Michael, you've got a microphone so you can actually buzz in if I get anything <laughs> wrong. There is an annual festival called the Rose of Tralee. <laughs> Great. The Rose of what? Trolley. I always thought it was trolley, mm. as in T-R-A-W-L-E-E -E or mm. L-E-Y. It turns out to be trolley, T-R-A-L-W-E. -E. Is that correct? It's, it's trolley. 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 Thank you. Literally. Trolley. Okay. Trolley. And that's the voice of the quiz team, Gay Michael. Okay. All right. Now, can you guess what kind of feminist event this is? <laughs> There's a rose. It's, it's not the Rose of Texas, no. It's, uh, There's a rose. It's there a there rose, is a Texas a rose, though. Trillion. There is a Texas rose. There is a Texas rose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is sorry, sorry. Like... I wasn't meaning to... I wasn't no-butting you. I thought that was a joke, and <laughs> it was the truth. I'm sorry. Is it like a floral design? <laughs> no. It is a competition for young women. Now, there is a... I think it's either a poem or a song about a woman... I don't know her name, but I'm just going to guess it's Mary. <laughs> is that correct? Yes. Um, it was either Mary or Mwiran, and I can't say that one. Um, it was someone called Mary, and she was fair and lovely or something like that, it says in the poem. Mm. Is it a poem or a song? It's a song. song. Can anyone do a couple of bars? Mary, she had pale skin. I love that. <laughs> How have you turned it into a country like number? Uh, anyone do a few bars? No. They don't know the song. The song is lost to time, but... <laughs> But the festival persists, despite feminism's best efforts. Mm. Um, so each... They're, 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 she's described... The Rose of Tralee in the song is described as a very beautiful woman. So mm. each year, all the different counties in Ireland, I think, send their rose, their best, their hottest woman. Great, great. But I think she's got to be under 30. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh, and, and unmarried. Whoa! Are you I telling no me children. I could compete? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, she could be international. Oh, so yes. there is a Texas rose. Yeah. And so the women of the Irish what, diaspora also come back to be roses. Yeah. Oh, so who yeah. comes back to be roses? Uh, the, the women of the Irish diaspora. Oh, the Irish Whoa. diaspora. Yeah. Any Irish in your family, do you think? Uh, well, according to the fucking commitments... <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>
<laughs> Perhaps. So, um, so at all the counties in Ireland send uh, their hottest, that they've decided the hottest Great. women, the Great. prettiest, loveliest. Love they it. then go and line up and compete in a beauty pageant. Great. And uh, there are some rules. Um, they have to be single, I think. Um, no, I, no, I don't think they have to be single. No, just unmarried. 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 Yeah. unmarried. Just um, unmarried. Could somebody, could somebody Google that? Because I think there's a dispute. <laughs> can somebody... Sorry? Mm. <laughs> they have to be unmarried. Okay. Someone needs to... Go- could someone look up the Wikipedia page and check? Because there is definitely disputed here. Oh, it sounds like the House of Commons. Yeah, because if you're gonna if you're oh. gonna teach me the most important fact about Ireland, um, you got to teach me right. Okay, and then there's now. there's men who escort them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll come to you in a second. There's men who escort them, and they are called escorts. And mm-hmm. each year, they decide who is the best escort. Mm-hmm. And there's an escort that. who wins best escort, what? and then the the well, one, how do they get to win stuff? It's because men get stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Check with the patriarchy. They're not even the hottest no. girl from the county. No. What the fuck are they getting an award for? They are getting an award oh for gosh. being the best escort. So we have I guess, some updates. Just, oh, yes, thank you. Updates, yes. Um, so now um, it's trans-friendly and married women can now enter. Unmarried women can right. enter. Trans-friendly, Ma- unmarried married women, women can enter. Okay, right. can I ask a question? When was that changed? I think this year, 2022. Wow, So this year. will be the first one. Oh, so this will be the first year where unmarried women are allowed in. Where married, married, women, married women, women are allowed trans in. trans women are allowed Despite in. Despite what's the point of seeing them if they're married because they're taken. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go, go back and hide in your house. <laughs> um, and uh, what I believe, and this was the most remarkable part for me, is that, because they have to do a talent thing and they have to do, like, dress up. And is it a bikini or... No, no, just a, a no, lovely it's dress Ireland. Fuck and no. a party piece. There'll be no showing no, of that pale skin. No, There was a really strong response. I wasn't sure about the bikini. There is a sweater competition. <laughs> <laughs> a fair art sweater competition. The turtleneck. fairest aisle. Who has the best turtleneck sweater. body? <laughs> and, then, and then, this was the most re- remarkable part for me, what the young woman wins, when, if she wins, is like a s- six months with a car. She doesn't win a car, but after that, she can lease it at a reasonable rate. Hey! Is that true? That's, That's great. remarkable. Yeah. Why don't they just give her a car? Incredible. Like, you can loan a car for six months, but then give it back. But we'll give you a great rate on it if That's you want to. That's so fun. I wonder if it started, like, when it started, they were like, you can have a carriage, my lady. And then when it became cars, they were like, you can't have shit, but you can borrow one. <laughs> Does anyone know the origins of the car prize? Wow. Nobody knows. Fascinating. Not even the quiz team knows. Uh, yeah. So that's the thing I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much. I feel like I can walk through these streets proudly, knowing everything I need to know about this culture. Everything you need to know. There's also the other, the other two things I know. Uh, one is the Angelus. Yeah. One is the Angelus, which is on television. There are like church bells at six o'clock. And every the other day. thing is, is uh, Bono owns a pub. Um, that's all you need to know about Ireland. It's a hotel. Yeah. Um, so that's. <laughs> what was that? What is that? And that's only the beginning. Part two will be in your feed by the time you finish listening to this. And in part two. We're joined by two incredible guests to talk about forgotten feminists, as well as hearing an amazing song from our musical guest, Tolu Make. If you would like to see my stand-up show, The Guilty Feminist Stands Up, it's an hour and 15 of me doing stand-up on my own, and it's about me coming out as bisexual and also going in by doing psychedelics. Um, It's had a very good reception so far, and I'd love you to see it. It's on at the Soho Theatre from the 26th of April to the 7th of May. Tickets are going fast. Get them now. We are on tour and we've had some incredible shows around the country, some of which you've already listened to. We are next going to be in Liverpool, Sheffield and Stratford with Guilty Feminist faves, Jessica foster Sophie Duca, Celia AB and music from the phenomenal Jess Robertson this Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 
22nd, 23rd, 24th of April. If you are not in any of those places, but you'd like to see us, check out guiltyfeminist.com live shows and see when and where we're coming to you, including Australia and New Zealand. We're all over you in July. We are also going to be in London for the final night of the tour at the Hammersmith Apollo on the 1st of October. Get tickets for that now. It's going to be an incredible bill. If you'd like to get ad-free episodes and regular monthly Zoom hangouts and a few other extras, then join our Patreon. And if you'd like more confidence and you want to do the online Big Speeches Guilty Feminist Workshop with Jessica Regan, dates on the website, along with all these things at guiltyfeminist.com. See you in part two.